Welcome everyone to this analysis. Today I will be discussing the best symbols in the game Yukio Capsule Monsters Colosseum. Now, what dictates whether they are good or not? It is ultimately dependent on offenses mainly, but there is also some niches such as SBAs and significant folk. I will mainly be ranking these using the Meteor mod developed by Oak, we will be leaving a link to his channel in the description, as I find that it is a great showcase of the pros and cons of each symbol. The difference between the vanilla and Weaver mod isn't too marginal in terms of symbol performance, but I will be mentioning vanilla in some cases as there are some differences. So we'll mainly focus on the campaign. The campaign is still a reasonable challenge, but PvP shenanigans will be showcased too. I'll be using a wonderful tier list here that is got the tiers from Stinky Doodoo -doo to the GOAT. So yeah, that's how we'll be ranking these. Wind. First of all, we have the wind symbol. Funny how this symbol seems good, as wind benefits from a lot of the terrain throughout the game. And I will say, it's higher in vanilla with the lower power level. Most monsters will most have 200 attack, which you will certainly can tank. But yeah, in Weaver Mod, they're just not viable. Monsters will be reaching that attack by area 2, they're by area 3. You better expect 300, and that is when most wind monsters crumble because they all just get one shot. Area 3 is very difficult as Dark and Thunders are just such difficult matchups, but particularly the Earth symbol. The Earth symbol is just, it's just not winnable in a lot of respects. Odeon is such a difficult matchup because all of his monsters can take pretty much any attack and you can't really dish it out against him, and his bites hit hard, and yours will certainly don't. Your best option for the area is pretty much just to snipe these monsters, and try to chip them down as much as you can. It is not a very reliable strategy, but it is the best you've got. You do get damage output options later. Area 4 is very good for this, and Area 5 is where you really can beat all those options, but it still really isn't enough. I found a lot of the time that damage output's just a really big problem. Yami Bakura is the hardest fight for this symbol, as his monsters hit so hard, and you just can't kill him without it least two blows, if not three. I actually just recommend bringing lights to that though, because winning with winds or much less fires, it's just not reasonable. The problem is that it's ironically lacking defensive options, which is funny. You would expect that a defense symbol would be good at defense, but it's quite the opposite. Fire monsters rarely have stats and wins, while they do certainly have defense stats, they just don't have enough, and you have to tank these things while also dealing it out. Thousand Dragon is definitely one of your best options, it is quite bulky. A funny thing though, it actually reaches the necessary defense thresholds that you will need for endgame with a fire symbol. It's better in defense, but well, does it matter when it can't kill? This thing really struggles with the damage output department later in the game, and Fire Symbol doesn't have that problem. You can tell, really. This symbol is completely outclassed in every respect. The symbol has damage. I'll say that it has the best damage output out of the pure defense symbols. Big problem. Most of those options are laid into the game. Sky Dragon and Crimson Sunburn. They are good monsters, but they're better with fire in every way. They don't benefit from this symbol, particularly Crimson Sunbird. Crimson Sunbird is just not durable. It can't take attacks with a wind symbol. I have not seen a matchup that it survives with either a wind symbol or a fire symbol that it would actually matter. Sky Dragon, the defense matters a little more, but it really still doesn't matter. You'd still prefer to just be using a fire symbol. PvP-wise, I don't see any shit. There's just nothing here. You should just use fire. It's quite sad, really. The symbol is in outclass in every way. It's worse light, it's worse fire, it's arguably worse water. <laughs> yeah, and I really am curious of what revenge mode will have for the Weaver mod, because yeah, the I don't know what you do. I guess hope you get multiple punished eagle and hope it gets an AP reduction because yeah, we're really lacking options. At the very least, for water, I can say it has options. 
just don't get the movement. Water. The other symbol in the glorious stinky doo-doo is water. Water is a bit more interesting. Were I not taking vanilla into account, it could potentially be a tier higher, but that is ultimately debatable in that regard. PvP-wise, it probably is. I see some niches in this symbol, though it is outclassed even still, which we'll get to soon enough. Water is an interesting one to discuss, nevertheless, as despite intending to play like wind, it is actually very different. The symbol does indeed have defense options, but it's lacking offense. Iosub, Fortress Whale, Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth, which I will refer to as Pugum, Crab Turtle, and Javelin Beetle are all decent defense options. My problem is that it's hard to go offensive. You mainly have to rely on SBAs, with which are rather lacking. Most cap out at 350 attack in Libra, which just isn't enough to beat most opponents. In vanilla, you just have to face the fact that your monsters will keep having garble attack no matter what. You'll still have the problem of your opponent will do vicious amounts of damage to you while you can do little but try to gang up on that foe. I still think in that regard, water is a bit more competent than wind since at the very least it can take hits. Wind just can't do this. But it's... A big problem. The damage output is just worse, and you will really feel this with the symbol. In the fight versus Kaiba 2, you are going to really struggle with his Earths. Those are just way too difficult to deal with. It can actually take multiple turns if your team is not well set up enough to deal with them. EXP management is incredibly difficult too. Because if you do not know in advance, you're screwed. You need to manage EXP for Petite Moth, Psychic Kappa, and Rude Mostly Petite Moth. That thing needs EXP the most. If you want my recommendation on how many to run, I would recommend running at least two. I ran one and kind of felt I regretted that. Uh, in terms of PvP, Fortress Will is a cool option since it's pretty bulky and has a pretty good SPA. But again, you have to be really careful about these. And the problem is, it can't tank everything. Thunder Symbol, for example, will use something like Gigatech, which just nuke you if it's almost 800 attack. That's very difficult to take, and the symbol just can't reliably take that on. At the very least, you have Needleworm. Needleworm's a pretty good tank. Swedish is too, but it's a bit more costly, so if you can, just use Needleworm. But yeah, this symbol. If you know what you're doing, you can do good things with it. Area 5, I do think it's not bad, aside from Kaiba 2, but that Kaiba 2 matchup is so much more sketchy than it is with the wind symbol. My recommendation is to use the wood symbol if you want to use these monsters. It's a lot more competent, and you will be having bulky monsters no matter what. Light. Next we get to the symbols that I feel are viable in their own ways. Obviously some more than others, but it's a thought that counts. But don't just think, well, this is in the second last tier, that means it's bad. Because they're not. They just lag behind in ways that the others don't. So we next have Light. Light is the best pure defense symbol with no doubts in my mind. While the one light foe, Pegasus 1, really doesn't do a good showcase of the symbol, I can assure you, the symbol is actually pretty good. It is slow, and that is a realization to have. Speed isn't its strong suit. It's all about precise placement and SPA nukes, or careful punishment. Area 3 isn't too bad for the most part, since you have a lot of good options at your disposal, such as Mon Laravas and Dark Witch. Mon Laravas in particular is quite helpful, as it requires low investment on your Laravas, and offers healing. You can get multiple of these, I recommend at least two. But you may find that you would want something better. That's where one of your best options is, that being Skullbear. Since it is the best tank you have, it has a great matchup versus many tough matchups, such as Kaiba 2 and Pegasus. But it is slow, so you have to keep a watchful eye over your movements and try to make the choke one. 
defense. It's the one defense symbol that feels like it's consistently able to work the defense way, so many fields can benefit it, and those that don't often have dark, so you actually can take advantage of that. Just be careful with your placements. Weaver mod particularly affects this rating. Wind is possibly better than it in vanilla, but I think the light buffs are significant enough that it deserves a tear gap. Essentially, the light monsters are significantly stronger attack-wise, which immensely helps. All of a sudden, Blue Eyes goes from a joke in vanilla to a very real threat that can nuke a lot of monsters and takes hits well. SPAs are very useful tools for endgame, and while not fully necessary all the time, they'll likely be very viable tools once revenge mode comes out. I would say that I didn't feel that it was a defense symbol. Defense just struggles with killing things that attack doesn't, which, while making sense, it also makes it dangerous since nukes not being killed in a single blow is not to be taken lightly, as they can very easily nuke you in a single blow. Notably, Earths are not as buffed as Lights. We'll see why they aren't, but a TLDR on this, you're mostly going to be using. There are some useful Earths. Von Laravas is very useful. There's some decent endgame ones such as Gaia the Fierce Knight and Performance of Sword. But the thing is, the early Earths are just not particularly good, at least in this sim. We'll see with Earth why they weren't so buffed, but yeah. You'll probably come to appreciate monsters such as Gyakuteno Megami and Seiryu a lot more, as they immensely help this symbol, particularly Seiryu for endgame. That piece is that attack buff is so useful at taking down tanks, it's not even funny. And Gilsha is an incredibly useful tool, alongside Blue Eyes. That thing can take down a lot of very scary tanks, so if you're in like a tank mirror match, that thing's pretty useful. As for PvP, this symbol has a cool niche. Skull Guardian is so bulky that it actually can tank a lot of monsters. Only monsters like Twin Ant, Thunder Dragon, and Giga Tech Wolf can actually put a massive threat on it, and well, you will probably will be struggling with that magic anyways. Wood can actually struggle with killing this thing. If you use the defense buff, none of the monsters can crack you. Not even stuff like High Tide Gyogen which is impressive. The problem is, it can be hard to find choke points. Pegasus 2's map is incredibly useful, as it's very easy to set up a choke point. If you can get multiple Skull Guardians, that map is incredibly useful for it. But you have to be careful, particularly with your Earths. Earths are just not easy to use in this symbol, but the lights are pretty chill. Dark. Next, we have Dark. Dark is the final defense boosting symbol alongside Wood, but Wood is a bit of a special case. Dark boosts Dark Attack and Thunder Defense, which as you can tell, is a bit off. Thunder Defense boosts are not particularly relevant, to be honest, and the simple reason why is they actually don't resist any monster, not even Light. Despite the fact that they have the type advantage over them, they actually are affected by a bug that doesn't give them a resistance defensively. This is quite annoying, meaning really you're not gaining much defensive value off. It's mostly how good is the monster itself defensively, and more often than not they're just not good at that. They're not as bad as the wins, but you would rather have attack. Good thing though, darks are really hard hitting. They are vicious. Insane PP, so they can take a lot of attacks. They got really good attack. Like, really good attack. You can easily get to like 600 attack or more with some of these darks. They hit very hard. And you get a lot of pieces thrown in. You can make Exodia. Karibo's great monster, particularly with a Dark and Thunder symbol. Metozoa, Red Eyes Black Metal Dragon, Last Fear, Ryukishin Powered. These are all for Merrick. And all reliable. Ishizu can give an endgame piece. Shoddy as well. It's very late when you get them, but they're quite useful. Black Skull Dragon helps against Kaiba if you miss out on Metozoa. The big problem though is that the Thunders are so under. You just don't get anything off of them, which sucks. 
they are just not good. There's a very big gap, and you might be thinking, well, if it's an offensive symbol, wouldn't we want something to serve as defense? Which I can get that logic, and there is a symbol that can work that out. This is not one of them. It just isn't bulky enough to really matter, and if it can tank them, it doesn't really help. Plus, lights are actually kind of difficult to kill in Weaver mod, that it really doesn't matter getting the- like, you would rather have the attack. Some battles can be very difficult, Pegasus 2 is probably the hardest battle in the game because there's a lot of light in that field and his earth symbol is so difficult. Those earths can 1v1 your darks. And I'm not mentioning some small fry monsters, I'm mentioning monsters like Metalzoa and Barrel Ring. They can 1v1. Pretty impressive. Uh, PvP-wise, I feel like anything you put this symbol up to, Thunder can do better. Thunder is just a better symbol overall. But I want to put it up here, because I do feel that this is a very good symbol. I just think that, in many ways, it is outclassed. Thunder just does whatever it does better. It truly is a case of what Nintendo not so, yeah, if you want to play with these monsters, just go for the Thunder Symbol. Thunder Symbol is, in most ways, better. Fire. We next have Fire. Fire is about an all-out barrage of offense, which in some ways is incredibly effective. But we'll see the woes of it later, but to say the least, this symbol has probably got the hardest hitting pieces, aside from maybe Thunder. Monsters like Meteor Black Dragon can get 800 attack in some scenarios. Defense symbols don't, well most certainly do not want to face this symbol unless they're water since they're going to have pretty disadvantageous matchups. I can most certainly say it doesn't matter how defensive the light monsters are, they really aren't putting enough pressure on these guys. Yami Mark 2 is a great showcase of the strengths of the symbol, but also the weaknesses of the symbol. The pieces have generally got high movement, so they can put a lot of pressure on you, but if you can survive those pieces, they're kinda screwed because they just can't really tank very revive. The funny thing is that the early game is very questionable, the damage output is very important, and since it is a glass cannon, you would expect that it would have a pretty, you know, good damage output throughout the game. This is quite funny though, the symbol is not actually very efficient early game. Its late game is very good, but the early game is actually a lot more questionable than other symbols. Fortunately, early game is still pretty easy, but Area 3 most certainly is not. Even with the symbol's power, like it still has a better time than wind, but that's not really saying much. Again, fusions are going to be pretty important, Thousand Dragon's still very important no matter what, but again, you have to buff up some important pieces. Wing Dragon Garen Fortress number 1 is very useful, and you could get some other fusions. Stuff like Dark Fire Dragon is a lot more effective in this symbol. Flame Swordsman's not terrible, but I don't like its range. One range just isn't good enough for me, but it has good both. Sky Dragons, Punished Eagles, and Crimson Sunbirds all get to insane attack value. These are going to be your best endgame pieces. If you can use these guys, you're going to put up a lot of pressure. In terms of PvP, my thoughts are that it is a very risky symbol to go for. The matchup versus Earth is abysmal, and we'll see why, but essentially they can tank you very easily and punish you, while you can't really punish them very easily. Some of their pieces can live free blows, while you can only deal, like, one, and then die. Think of them like some OTK deck in the TC, where if they can kill you, cool, but if they can't, you really are going to be struggling. But I do think that in plenty of cases, this symbol can be really reliable, particularly against Marek. Marek's map is insane for these pieces. It is probably the strongest map that they can perform in. But you really need a free map like that. Something like that, or Kaiba 2's map. Something restrictive like Pegasus 2's map with all the barriers, or maybe some, some other maps can be quite difficult. Diagonal movers are definitely the best pieces for this symbol, for the most part. Not too many of the cardinal movers are particularly good, but it's still a pretty good symbol. Thunder. 
We are moving on to the top three. This is where I would consider that we really get to the crazy symbols. So we have Thunder. Thunder doesn't really seem like too big of a gap. I mean, after all, this is just the same as Dark, but Thunder's have an attack boost instead of defense boost. So what's the big deal? Thing is, they make a great use of attack. In fact, they're probably the best attackers in the game. Thunder is incredibly offensive. Pretty much anything they touch aside from Earth dies. The speedrun is a great showcase of this. The speedrun mainly uses Kaminari Kozu, but you will see that Kaminari Kozu is nerfed here. If you want to replicate that experience, then you got the perfect replacement for it. Also, Hero. But you got some absolute monsters like Akakiesu, who has incredible Giga Tech Wolf, who has just got insane attack, and if you want to have an alternative to that thing, Twin Head Thunder Dragon is about as good, if not better. Bolt Penguin, Kaminari Attack, Tripwire Beast, Giant Mech Soldier, these are all insanely good pieces. Giant Mech Soldier has high range. High threat ranges are really important here. Now, in this symbol more than Dark, you really want to use Karibo. Now, Karibo is pretty important in Dark symbol, but it's even more so in this one. Perfect Block is just such a useful ability. Transferring that over to another monster is incredible. For a non-defense symbol, having access to a Perfect Block on a monster is incredible. It means that you can get away with attacking with little consequences. This makes this symbol capable of putting up a very difficult game on your opponent. Now, the AI doesn't particularly use these kinds of effects, but in the player's hand, these are probably your best tools. Pegasus 2 is incredibly difficult, even still though, because he's using the best symbol in the game, spoiler alert, you can guess what that is. But yeah, taking down some of his lights are incredibly important. This is easier on the thunder symbol, as you have access to thunders that can one-shot his lights. One-shotting lights is really important here, particularly Carrot Idol. We'll see later, but Carrot Idol is probably the most ridiculous. Trihorn Dragon's buffed here with an incredibly useful SPA that improves the power of Derek on the field. It's actually a pretty significant buff to the point that I would say that it's worth it, particularly with the fact that Derek is usually on fields anyways. So you can usually set it up. Pumpkin's got really good threat ranges. You just have a load of options at your disposal. Magician of Black Chaos, Metozoa. You can't get BLS in this route but you can trade it over or maybe it appears in revenge mode. But I mean, I feel like you don't even need it. You just get so many good options. The big problem with this symbol is cost, funnily enough. It's a big problem in vanilla too. Your pieces are really expensive and you don't really get that many AP boosters. In vanilla, you can just use a load of Karibos. Like, honestly, using five Karibos is not even like a crazy idea. But yeah, here it may not be the best choice. AP isn't as big of a problem, but your pieces are very expensive no matter what, so you just have to accept that. New Game Plus is going to look like it's going to have above the cap, so it could be possible that we could just use that to our advantage. No matter what though, this is an incredibly powerful set. If you know what to do with it, you can do some insane things with this. Wood. We have wood next, which sounds odd. This symbol doesn't seem like it would be that good considering how we ranked water. Thunder is an incredibly powerful symbol. How does this symbol compete? Simple. The symbol has a lot of really interesting options that allow it to have very diverse plays. Needleworm and Suijin both have a self perfect block. This is an incredibly useful effect, particularly on Needleworm, as it is very cheap. Additionally, the symbol buffs the attack and defense of wood monsters by 50%, meaning that while you won't be having as much attack as other symbols that boost offense, you still have a lot of attack. You also have massive offensive monsters, such as Haitai Gyojin and Hyosu, or Hyosu. The symbol is buffing defense to the point that it meets important defense thresholds, which is very useful. For example, Pugum can survive a carrot idol, which is really important. Surviving that thing is incredible because that thing is absolutely terrifying. The big problem with the symbol is the fact that, similar to water, management of evolutions is pretty difficult, but what you do get out of it is pretty incredible. One of the most 
interesting symbols for sure. The buffs to the symbol really do go a long way to making the symbol better. For example, the buff to Psychic Kappa increases its range, which is really useful. The surround range that is given is really useful. Also, Hunter Spider is a really good budget monster. Pretty good stats and nice AP cost. Also incredibly interesting SPA if you can say it all. In New Game Plus, the symbol gets some interesting options, particularly Javelin Beetle, which is an incredibly good monster. There's also Dungeon Worm. Dungeon Worm is very good, as is Anti-Earth. You can't tell, it's the best symbol. Yes. And the final symbol, we have Earth. Why is Earth the most powerful though? Well, to be honest, I was of the opinion that this was the most powerful symbol even before Libra which is ridiculous. Why is that the case? Well, I think that what Libra Mod shows is just how dominant this symbol really is. It is capable of tanking almost anything. The only things that can really threaten these guys is super powered darks, and you seriously have to pump those guys with insane attack. Because when you compare it to Light Symbol, where they can be one shot, these guys cannot. In fact, they can probably be three hit from darks, which is absurd. That should not be the case. Now, admittedly, this is taking into account mid range darks. What about the end game? Simple, you got lights. The lights threaten these guys immensely, and because of that, it really isn't difficult to trivialize the game. But why is this such a big difference? Well, it's because of PP. PP is the stat that Earth buffs. PP, or protection points, is essentially hit points in this game. Buffing hit points, as it turns out, is a lot more powerful but than buffing. Defense. This is since buffing defense only really buffs it by a little bit, but take into account the fact that PP is often hundreds of times higher, that is a ridiculous buff. All of a sudden, something like Gaia the Fierce Knight has 1200 PP, Laravas has almost got 1000. All these Earths, which were barely even buffed in the mod, are still ridiculously powerful. Even some of the hardest hitting darks have to try really hard to get through these guys. Minimum, you need two. The problem with the Earths, though, is that they weren't able to put in pressure. Lights weren't too strong in vanilla. And that's the catch. When you buff Light, you also buff Earth. And Earth is insanely broken. The lights are now ridiculous now. They themselves can actually put a lot of pressure on you. Ishizu 2 usually plays lights. In one symbol, she only plays lights with an earth buff, and they hit really hard. Even that is a difficult map. Not the hardest, but it can be a bit difficult. The most evident one is Carrot Idol. Carrot Idol is the most ridiculous piece in this game. It has zero map effect and area effect. Why is this so significant? It means that Dark doesn't affect it on the field. Usually that's a big problem for lights, but this thing doesn't really care. It also has absurd stats for how much it costs. It costs 110 AP, which as it turns out is not a very high amount. It really trivializes anything that it faces, and the crazy thing is that it's very bulky. Okay, so this is Live Adrian, just recording gameplay, just to show the difference. Like, this is Exodia, and we'll attack one of our here. You see that even though this is really high power, but let's actually buff this up even more. I know this is level 5, but points will stand. You. Oh, I don't have the SPA. It doesn't matter. The point is, it's really hard to one shot these things. Like, if I had this thing at level 9, I could, but that's more of an AP cost, which you can debate whether or not that's worth it. The point is here, is that it is really difficult to actually kill these things, and it's even more insane in Vanilla. Vanilla, they actually have higher PP. The PP was nerfed so that offensive and defensive stats could be buffed. This is why they're so lackluster in Vanilla. But yeah, you see here, again, Carrot Idol isn't affected in any way. The stats don't change aside from the attack, which is of course because this symbol. Uh, you see here that Blue Eyes is 
taking a reduction, but you see here, it's still got really strong stats. That is still 403 attack. Like, this thing's actually really good in this game. Uh, helped by the uh, map or area effect. And similar case for Sierra, it's not really caring too much about the dark change. And, like, you can put pressure on these guys, for sure. Even, like, Thunders can. But... Yeah. <laughs> it's really insane just how ins just ridiculously bulky these guys are. Like, you need generous scenarios like this. I just set this up for demonstration purposes. But obviously in a real game, they would have already attacked you by now. And you can see where it's going from here. They can easily one round these darks, and the darks struggle to one round these. The lights can be one rounded. We can we just show a demonstration of that. Uh, you can one round lights pretty easily. Like, you can one run this easily. They don't have any problems with attack. The big problem here is really the Earths. The Earths are the big issue here. Thunder is the most efficient at dealing with this because at the very least they have hard hitting pieces all around. They all put pressure on these pieces. But you can't say the same for something like water where they just don't put any pressure on these. That is that. <laughs> but for an example, a monster like Metalzilla, which by all means should put pressure on these Earths, can't really do all that much. It will barely win a matchup versus Panther Warrior. It's even worse when you have scary lights on their team. Dark struggles with this symbol. You have to play smart to beat it. If you want to know how to beat Kaiba, snipe his monsters. That's pretty much how. And you aren't exactly struggling on any fronts. You don't need to fuse. Evolutions are quite helpful though. Von Garavass is a really good monster. I'd actually recommend getting Gold Bulls. Hanima is pretty decent. And you even get Gamun and Happy Lover, which are really good pieces that it turns out. Both with very high threat ranges. And you can get Gazelle. Gazelle is a really good piece because it's essentially higher threat range Mon Laravas. Mon Laravas is a really good piece, but if you feel you need a little more movement, that's where Gazelle comes in. I personally think that Mon Laravas is better in light because it focuses towards bulk, but for this symbol, it's all about just putting pressure on your opponent by having these durable Earths bait them in, then punishing them with lights. Or heck, if they're using Thunder, these guys actually put a lot of pressure on those monsters because they just pierce through their defense. So it doesn't matter how bulky your Thunder is, it can't reliably tank these Earths. And as for other symbols, Fire doesn't have enough firepower, ironically. Wood can do something, particularly with the Waters, but it still takes like three or even four hits. It's pretty nutty. So what do you do? Well, there are SBAs that can counter these two monsters in the game, Crawling Dragon and Dungeon. I already mentioned Dungeon Worm earlier, but think about this. If you want to have symbol buff with these guys, which does matter, you have to make sure to have two monsters that either are part of water and wood, which water cannot win at all. It's just way too difficult. Wood can, but it's a bit difficult. Or we play Lighter Earth. Yeah, that's... Uh... It's a little awkward. Even AI can be really difficult with Earth. One of the hardest fights in the game for Thunder is the Pegasus 2 fight. That fight is really difficult, especially if you're using Dark, since oddly enough he doesn't use the lights anymore, which will have made it infinitely easier. The fight versus Kaiba 2 for water is so hard. I took so many attempts with that fight, and it's not hard to see why. They don't put any pressure on them while the Earths are actually kind of hard hitting on that map, and the Light's even more so. 
and everything's bulky on that field. You kind of have to have a choice of, do you want to have the early attack buffs on that map with the waters, like mainly water monsters, or do you want to have woods? I recommend waters because you need early pressure on those guys, and you need to get rid of super war vines quickly, which is Kaiba's lovely set of monsters. They were pretty terrible in vanilla because they had one range, but the simple buff of giving them two range takes them from trash to treasure. But what's insane to me is just how many insane options there are. I haven't even mentioned Ill Witch has perfect luck built in to herself, which that's insane. You have the powerful Seiryu, who has a very nice cost and a powerful attack. Like, I could mention this symbol all day. I could make, like, hours of discussion on this symbol. Even early game pieces like Skellingle and Jenin, Prisman, all these pieces are good. As for Earths, like, even if you restricted all my options there, I would still have loads of viable Earths. That's just how good the symbol is. Earths are kind of optional on which ones you want to bring, because all of them can tank. It's just a matter of how much utility you want from them. Monogarvast is my preferred choice for early to mid game. It even helps in some late game maps, but it's not too strong. Guy the Fierce Knight is a piece I really like. It is hard hitting and has very high bulk later in the game. And Forms of Sword has just got a really good threat range, similar to Giant Mech Soldier. It's not as hard hitting as with like a Thunder Symbol, but like that's so much pressure you're putting on it still because that is a good range. I have no doubts that more will be coming out. There's some in the mod. I haven't even talked about all the lights and hurts. I could talk about them all day, but it really is an excellent symbol and definitely deserving of being the best symbol in the game. And if you want to know why they're the best in vanilla, simply put, not a single piece can threaten a one shot on these guys. Even Exodia, which if that doesn't say that it's the best symbol, I don't know what does. If you sticked around for this long, then I'd like to thank you for watching. And if you disagree with my opinions, then that's cool. Frankly, I like to hear other perspectives and more educated ones than mine. I don't know this game inside out, despite how many times I've played through it. You learn a new thing every day when you play this game. If you have any constructive criticism, feel free to put it down in the comments. So yeah, thanks for watching, and have a great day.